We've been working on solving right triangles using the primary trig ratio, sine, cos, and tan. Uh, but unfortunately, not all triangles are right triangles. So today we're going to adapt our sine, cos, and tan to be used in triangles that are non-right. So you can see today's topic is sine law for non-right triangles. And today's goal is to learn how to adapt our primary trig ratios for use in non-right triangles by developing and using the sine law, also known as the law of sines. So you can see at section 6.9, that comes from the textbook, Math Power 10 uh, by McGraw-Hill. And um, you can just see the, the opening paragraph there just says what I just said. Not all triangles are right triangles. And if you want to use the primary trig ratios, you cannot use them um, unless you have a right triangle. But we can adapt our use of the primary trig ratios to be used in all triangles by the sine law. Now what I have here is just the sine law and we're going to prove it in just a second. For any triangle ABC where A, B, and C all in small letters, lowercase letters, are the side opposite the angles uh, A, B, and C all in capital letters respectively, the sine law states that the sine of A divided by the side of A equals the sine of angle B divided by the side length B equals the sine of angle C divided by the side length of C. And we are going to prove that for you right now. So here's the proof. And we start off, given triangle ABC, the first thing we're going to do is draw AD, a line, perpendicular to BC. So that's right here. We're going to drop a line that's perpendicular down there. And it's perpendicular. We're going to mark it perpendicular like that. And since I said we're going to call it AD, I'm going to put my D down here. Now for our proof, we're going to start in triangle ABD. So we're going to say in triangle ABD, dot, dot, dot. Well, since this is the sine law, we're going to start with sine. And we're going to use the angle that is the only angle in triangle ABD that was also in our original triangle ABC. And that angle will be angle B. So I'm going to take the sine of angle B and I'm going to mark on this AD as the height of the triangle, which is what we know it actually is. And if I go completely by the naming convention we had before. This side here is side little c. This side over here is side little b. And then this side over here, which isn't in our smaller triangles, but that would be side lowercase a. So going back to what we started, the sine of b, sine we know equals opposite over hypotenuse. So in this triangle, our h is the opposite side and this c is the hypotenuse. So we're going to write that as h over c. Uh, but we'd like to make a substitution because h wasn't in our original triangle. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by c so that I get h by itself and maybe I can get rid of it somehow because it was not in triangle abc to start with. And since we're worried about triangle ABC, that's where we're going to go. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by C. So I get C times the sine of B, and that equals H. Now, we're done with that triangle, but I'm going to continue to do the same kind of thing in the other small triangle we have there, which is triangle ACB. So now I'm going to say in triangle... A, C, D, dot, dot, dot. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to choose the sine of angle C, since angle C is the only angle in triangle ACD that was in the original triangle. So I'm going to do the sine of C, and sine again equals opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, my opposite side is still this H side here if we're going from angle C. But now my hypotenuse is B. So this becomes H over lowercase b. 
And once again, our H was not in the original triangle, so I'm going to get H by itself and hope that I can make a substitution. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by B, which gives me B times the sine of C, and that's going to equal H. And all I did there was multiply both sides of this triangle by the B, where, of course, it cancels out on that side. Okay, now I want you to notice that if C sine B equals H and B sine C equals H, they must also be equal to each other. So we're basically going to make a substitution here. I'm going to take what I found for H in 1 and substitute it for what I found in H in 2. So if I put a 1 and a 2 there, I'm going to say sub 1 into, and what we have here is B sine C equals C sine B. So B sine C equals C sine B. Now we have everything in there was in the original triangle. We had capital B was in the original triangle, capital C was in the original triangle, lowercase b and lowercase c were also in the original triangle. Now, this isn't looking quite like the sine law that I showed to you before, so I'm going to make one more um, adjustment to this, and I'm going to divide both sides of this triangle, sorry, both sides of this equation, by lowercase b, lowercase c. And that should be all right. Remember, we can do whatever we want to both sides as long as we do the same thing on both sides. And notice that now I can make this cancellation here. B divided by B is 1, so it's gone. And C divided by C is 1, so it's gone. And what we have here is the first part of the sine law that says sine of C over little c equals the sine of B over little b. Now, if I wanted to divide the triangle up in different ways, I could, and I could get sine A in there, but I'm not going to do that. We'd be much better to spend our time in learning how to use the sine law rather than developing the rest of the formula. Okay, on this next slide, you'll notice it says, if we had drawn the altitude to a different side, we would go through the same process to see that side A and angle A are involved in the same ratio. Uh, so we have developed the sine law. Now, before we go on to use the sine law, uh, I want to give a brief warning. Sine law does not work for finding obtuse angles. It doesn't. Um, those greater than 90 degrees. You should never use sine law to find an angle opposite the largest side of the triangle just in case it is obtuse. And the reason for that is that there are two angles between 0 and 180 degrees that have the same value of sine. Your calculator is always going to give you the acute version of it, whether the triangle warrants it or not. So you need to use um, use some other methods to find the biggest angle in a triangle. Now, um, in the brackets there, it says, note, to use sine law, you must have a side and its opposite angle with no numeric values. So they have to have a number on it, a side and its opposite angle. So we're going to do this example here. Using sine law to solve right triangles, and remember to solve a triangle means to find out absolutely everything there is to know about that triangle. And so for the triangle that we're going to do here, it should be noted that we can use sine law because I have an angle and its opposite side. And so that's the way we're going to set it up first. We start by saying, okay, I have the sine of 35. So I have the sine of 35, and I'm going to put it over its opposite side, which is 42. Now that has to equal the sine of another angle over its opposite side. In this particular triangle, the only other piece of information I'm given is this length of 64 here, which means what I have to find is its angle opposite. 
So what I'm looking for is the sine of D, and I can find it using its opposite side of 64. Now, in order to solve for D, I first have to solve for the sine of D. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this triangle, sorry, both sides of this equation by 64. These two 64s cancel, and I'm left with just the sine of D on this side of the equation. On this side of the equation, I have 64 times the sine of 35 divided by the sine of 42. And that answer is 0 0.8740. It's best to leave at least four decimal places uh, if you're going to clear your calculator. So to figure out what D is, I now have to use the inverse sign on the calculator. So I'll get D is the sign to the negative 1 of 0 0.8740. And that answer to the closest degree is 61 degrees, gives us angle D. So now I know that angle D is 61 degrees. Since I know angle D is 61 degrees, I can now figure out that angle using the angle sum of the triangle theorem because I know that all the angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So angle E will equal 180 minus 61 minus 35. And that gives us 84 degrees. So we've almost got this triangle solved for. The last thing that I need to know is side little e. Now if I'm going to use sine law to find a side, I am going to use it upside down. I'm going to say side little e divided by the sine of its opposite angle, which is 84, equals, and I'm going to use our original ratio in the triangle, which was 42 over the sine of 35. I just flipped both of these upside down. Ratios can be used um, right side up, or the, you can use its reciprocal. And the reason for that is it now makes it easier to f get E by itself. I'm going to multiply both sides of this triangle by the sine of 84. These two signs of 84 cancel each other out, and I'm left with E equals 42 times the sine of 84 over the sine of 35. And that is just a number that can be punched into your calculator. And that answer is um, to one decimal place, since it's a side length, 72.8 and this our measurement was in meters. So we've now found all of the relevant information for this triangle. This was 72.8 meters. We know everything there is to know about this particular triangle. Now this triangle here um, at first, looks like we might not be able to use sine law for it because we don't have an angle and its opposite side. But on closer inspection, we can see that, no, we maybe don't have the angle across from 5 centimeters, but we can find it very easily using the angle sum of a triangle theorem. So I'm going to say angle A equals 180 degrees minus 57 minus 61, and the reason for that is the angle sum of a triangle theorem. And so that answer is 62 degrees. Now that I know this angle up here is 62 degrees, I can find the other two sides, this side little b and this side little c, using the sine law. Starting with side little b, I'm going to uh, since I'm finding sides, I'm going to use the upside down version of the um, sine law and say that little b over the sine of 57 has to equal my two 
I use the ratio here, 5 over the sine of 62. And to get b by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by the sine of 57. And once I've done that, my answer for little b is 4.7, if I'm rounding to one decimal place. Now I'm going to do the same thing for side little c. c is opposite the sine of 61. And so when I set up my ratio, I'm going to use 5 over the sine of 62, same as I did before. And to find my answer, I'm going to multiply both sides by the sine of 61. And after I've done that, I can see that my answer is 4.95, which if we're rounding to one decimal place, actually rounds to 5.0 centimeters. And so we've solved that triangle now too. Okay, so go ahead and try to find a few on your own using the law of science.